So it is that time. Hello, hello, hello. My name is Natasha Nurse. I am the host for Style For It's Next Live conversation tonight. We're talking all about how to be your number one advocate. Who am I? I'm Style For It's brand ambassador, and I'm also the owner and co-founder of Dressing Room Made, a coaching and consulting platform for women entrepreneurs and creatives. And what do I do? I love to host events like this where I can create content and start conversations about things related to women empowerment, women in fashion, women in career, women in our feelings, women just rising above all of the nonsense and the craziness and the amazement that makes up life. <laughs> and tonight's conversation, like I was saying a little bit earlier, is special because when we talk about being your number one advocate, right, it sounds really empowering, it sounds really cool, but it has practical implication for how empowered you feel, the types of decisions that you make, and where you go in your life. So I hope you're ready for a jam-packed session to really kind of talk about, tactically speaking, what does it mean to be your best advocate? But before we get there, I want to make sure that everyone is up to date with Style for it and what is this platform all about. So Brand ambassador for Style For It, StyleForIt.com, the first ever online plus size consignment platform dedicated to women sizes 12 to 32. Yes, I said it, 12 to 32, phenomenal range, plus size only, right? So how cool is that? What does consignment mean? You can buy new clothing that is at a wonderful discount, meaning it's one price at a store and it's a whole other reduced price on this platform. So that's phenomenal because listen, your girl loves a deal. If you're American, you love a deal. <laughs> Let's shop the deals, right? So go to styleforit.com to learn more about the platform. We also, they also sell, uh, in addition to new clothing, gently used clothing, right? So clothing that is sold by other women who are saying, hey, these were gems for me before. Now they can be gems for you. How amazing is that? I personally can attest to the fact that I've purchased a couple of Michael Kors items for not Michael Kors pricing. Love, love, love. So let me put in the comments here so that you have it. Make sure you visit Style for It at styleforit.com, right? That's what you got to do. So uh, for me, I, I for why I love the... I love the site is a, you know, I think fashion is an important part of uh, a woman or a person's life because it is what, whenever we go outside, the first thing people do is they make an assessment as to who you are and the type of person you are in this world. So what you're wearing is a representation of your brand that you're building. So whether you're an entrepreneur, you're a doctor, you're a teacher, you're a stay at home mom. Uh, no matter what your profession or your career, your fashion has an, it's an extension of who you are and what you're doing in this world. So it's really important to really own that conversation. And a part of being your best advocate is making sure that you're presenting the image that you want for the world, right? And so check out styleforit.com. I think you'll really love a lot of the pieces. Again, size is 12 to 32. So if you fit that range, you will love it. Check it out. What do you do? You can open up an account and you can shop, shop, shop. If you also have gems in your closet, you're looking to declutter. That's always the conversation as we come into the spring period. But any time of the year, really, it's a really great conversation to have of clutter. How do we have less of it? Uh, I don't know. Sell it and make money. How about them? <laughs> Apples, right? So definitely go to styleforit.com. You can do both. You can shop and kind of upgrade your style as well as declutter and make money off of things already in your closet. So now that that's clear, I think we are ready to go into the conversation today, which is all about being your number one advocate. I have eight particular steps that I want to go through, tactically speaking, things that I myself are, have to work through, things that I teach my clients through coaching, through the content that I create. And number one with a bullet, saying no and creating boundaries. So what does it mean to be an advocate for yourself, right? It's a person who's going to be standing up for you, aka you, standing up for yourself. Uh, to be a, what your number one advocate is understanding what you can do and what you can't do or you don't want to do, right? And the power of no is beautiful. It's a two-letter word that has chilling effect. <laughs> chilling effect, right? When people are imposing their will on you, when people are imposing their wishes on you and they're not in line with what you envision for yourself, 
two letter word. No, no. Let's say it together. No. It's beautiful. I love it. Say it, say it, say it. Now, I'm not contesting Shonda Rhimes' book of, you know, uh, say yes, right? <laughs> Live a life of yes, essentially, for a year. Absolutely you, absolutely, you need to say yes to the universe, yes to opportunities, yes to success, all of that good stuff. Yes to the dress, all of that. <laughs> but what I am suggesting is saying no to things that you don't want, saying no to toxic people, saying no to toxic situations, saying no to toxicity, things you don't want to do, things that make you feel uncomfortable, and it's not going to be a pain point of growth, but it's going to be something that is harming you, something that is not making you progress in your career, in your life, in your relationship. So saying no, creating boundaries, letting the world know what you want, what you don't want, how you expect to be treated. That is probably one of the best things that you can do to be your own best advocate, right? So that's number one. If you have questions, like I said, please put them in the comments as I go through. Number two, get to know yourself, right? How can you advocate for yourself if you don't know who you are? And so that seems like a funny statement, right? Because you're like, well, I've been living for, I mean, for me, I'm in my 30s, maybe you're in your 40s, 50s, 20s, wherever you are in your life. Could you get to know yourself better? Hells yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. A part of our life journey, ladies and gentlemen, is to get to know ourselves on a deeper, more intimate level every single day, every single week, every single month, every single year. Does that sound like a lot of work? Hells yeah. <laughs> But, you know, that's that's what we're here for. We're not here just to collect those checks and to pay bills and to, you know, travel and, and go to Disneyland. Like, <laughs> there are, I think, deeper <laughs> intentions meant for our, our spiritual growth, our personal growth, our intellectual growth, our financial growth, all of that. And I think it's really tied to the idea of, like, who are you, right? Who are you in this world? Because what I think is really funny as we transition into different stages of our lives and our careers... We notice it, right? Who you are at 15 was very different than who you are at 25, than who you'll be at at 35, you'll be at, at 55, right? So constantly getting to know yourself allows you to have that breadth of experience and, and intimacy with yourself to say no, right? For to things that you need to say no to, but then also understanding when you need to say yes, understanding when you need to make a shift in where you live, understanding when you need to make a shift in your style and creating your signature style, understanding when, it, when you need to make a shift in your career, right? Do you want kids? Do you want more kids? Do you want an animal? Do you, like all of the wants and wishes are tethered to kind of who you are. So this intimate understanding is not something I'm talking about just from a theory perspective, but it, it has practical implication in your life. So number one, saying no, creating boundaries. Number two, get to know yourself a bit more because that's where you start to have context for when you have to stand up for yourself, when you have to treat yourself as a queen or whatever category you call yourself, right? that's how you do it. You have to really get to know yourself. So I hope that's clear. And again, put in the questions, put in the comments if you're not necessarily fully on board with what I'm saying and or you want me to elaborate, okay? Next is pay attention to the signs. So what do I, what do I mean by this? Ultimately, you know, I am a firm believer in the secret, the law of attraction. If you're not familiar with these concepts, put that in the comments so I can know, so that I can, as, as the brand ambassador, right, we're putting together content every single month for you. And yes, it's tied to fashion, but it's also tied to our careers. It's also tied to the lives that we're living because that it feeds into each other, right? So I want to know if that's something that we should talk about. Let's let me know. And, and so if you also agree with me and you are a, a person who's passionate about understanding the secret, understanding the law of attraction, which again, if you do a quick Google search, it will tell you, it's really the idea of the life you live is very much connected to the types of thoughts that you're thinking and the way that you are approaching your life. So for instance, you know, the conversation between positive and negative manifestation, right? I hope this doesn't happen. I hope that I do get this. Which is the better stepping stone for your life? 
the affirmative yes, not the affirmative negative. <laughs> That's really like the simple breakdown. If you want to be more successful on a continuous basis in your life, right? There's a lot of people who we're all riddled with negativity. It's a part of kind of just kind of conditioning that we have in our society and, and different trauma and experiences we have. But ultimately, law of attraction is bringing to you what you think about and what you say, whether it's good or bad. So what is the advice? Go on the positive route. <laughs> Optimism will always be more enlightening for you and more likely to be fruitful than the negative counterpart. So pay attention to the signs. When you start to think about what you want in your career, how to make changes in your life, there are universal signs that come to you. And sometimes they're obvious, sometimes they're subtle, sometimes you meet random people, you have certain conversations, and it's just kind of like a, whoa, that happened, and oh, that's interesting. You know, I don't necessarily believe in a coincidence. I don't know if you do, would love to know. Please put it in the comments, let me know. But ultimately, when, when you're getting these signs, when you're having these conversations, when you're learning these new things, you're stumbling upon things, what are you doing with that information, right? What are you doing? Are you just kind of taking it in and then moving on? Or are you taking time to reflect and really think about what, what was the purpose of this? What was the purpose of meeting this person? What was the purpose of having this conversation? So that's what I mean by taking time to really look at the signs and, and make decisions and, and don't be kind of clouded by the idea that like the universe is not there for you because there's love. There is an actual book called The Universe Has Your Back by Gabrielle Bernstein. It's a phenomenal book. Uh, happy to recommend it if you if you're looking. Put that in the comments. Let me know. And uh, it's true. It's 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 you know it's definitely a belief system that I carry with me on and on and on because it a is a comforting thought, right? Like the universe has your back. Awesome. But then also there are signs, and I think there's lots of theories that support uh, that that. Kind Kind of mindset and that approach to life. So if you're interested, tell me in the comments. We can talk more about it, okay? Next is doing what you love every single day. This is a kicker, guys, right? In the month of love, in, in this time in your life, could you honestly say that you do something that you love every single day? Just honestly, if you think about that question, what would be the answer for yourself? I'd love to know because this is what we're talking about, right? This is a part of the conversation of being your number one advocate for yourself. So for me, my answer is yes, because I'm pretty low maintenance when it comes to what I love. For me, definitely food. Don't judge me. <laughs> But uh, I've, I've started this new like meal planning thing, so I'm really enjoying that. That's been a really fun uh, new endeavor in my life. But I also love to read. I also love to listen to music. I love to dance literally down the street, like everywhere. You'll see me at the gym. I was just at the gym today, even though I'm getting over cold, I'm trying to get back into it, right? And you'll see me like dancing on the treadmill as I'm walking, right? I'm just, ah, yeah, 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 right? Like those, so I've already done multiple things that I love for myself. I've read, went to the gym, and not that I love the gym, but I love the dancing part, <laughs> and, uh, you know, doing things like this, producing content that I love and, and that motivates me and moves my spirit. I am fortunate to say that pretty much every day I make a point to do something that I love, but do you? Do you do something you love every single day? If not, my question to you is why not? Because for many of you, when I speak to mothers, when I speak to people who are caring for others, they are constantly what? Putting the needs of their loved ones ahead of theirs, right? You, If I asked you, would you do anything for your mom? Would you do anything for your loved ones? Most people say yes, right? Not everyone, but <laughs> most people say, yes, of course. But then when I ask you the question of, would you do anything for yourself, right? What's the answer? Right, so that's really key here, that when we're advocating for ourselves, when we're loving ourselves to the truest, truest point that we could be, that, that's really what it comes down to. Because if you think about it, how can you truly love others? How can you truly care for others if you refuse to give yourself that time and that attention? Because what's the typical response that people do? Oh, I'm so busy. Oh, I'm, so t I'm too tired. Oh, you're too busy to love yourself. You're too tired to care for you. Hmm. Right, this is a problem. This is a big problem, ladies and gentlemen. We need to advocate for ourselves by advocating 
to ourselves that we have to implement time in the schedule. So if you say you love to jump out of planes, okay, maybe that's not something you can do every day, but is it something you could do every quarter, meaning every couple of months of the year? Is it something that you could also, you know, read about? Is that something that you love? Do you like podcasts? Do you like networking? What are all the things that you love? And is there a way to implement a piece of that, a portion of it every single day? Maybe you love meditation. Maybe you love napping. Is that something you can do every day? I I suspect, I'm not necessarily going to say it happens in every single case, but I suspect more likely than not, you could and I could implement daily activities that we love that would classify or quantify as things that we love to do every single day. So if you disagree, I want to know in the comments, please put them and let me know. But I, I advocate, I'd like to hear from someone who tells me they can't. That would be interesting because I want to know out of the, all the things that you love, is it absolutely impossible that you aren't, you couldn't do something every single day or are you choosing not to, right? There's a difference between can and can't or sh I'm not wanting to, right? So where do you stand on that? Next, trying new things. So for this month, who tried something new? Who ate something new? Who went somewhere new? Who read something new? Right? So for me, again, I'm pretty low maintenance in <laughs> satisf satisfying myself. So when I do try something new, definitely fits within the reading regimen, which is super easy to fulfill. Definitely within the food. Y'all, I told you I like to eat. So <laughs> obviously we're going to eat something new. We're going to try something new, right? But then also, what do we do? We can also speak to new people. We can travel to new places, right? So trying something new is a wonderful way for what? Putting ourselves sometimes in that uncomfortable space, but it's for what? It's for the purpose of glory and growth, as I like to say. It's my little catchphrase. So you're welcome to use it. Just quote me, Bill. And <laughs> Natasha, nurse, thank you. <laughs> and so when we are trying something new, why is this important? It forces us to learn something new about ourselves. And again, what did we talk about when it comes to learning more about us? The more intimate we are with ourselves, the better we can advocate for ourselves. So that's the value of getting to know yourself better, boo-boo. So there's that. Next, self-care. So especially during the month of love, when we say uh, self-care, what does that mean to you? So if you, ca if you caught the last live stream with the beautiful, the talented, the amazing Faith Costa, model, influencer, advocate, she and I had a phenomenal conversation about really what it does it mean for influencers, kind of guide on self-care, self-love, all of that jazz. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go to styleforit.com, click on the YouTube button, you'll see the YouTube channel. There's so much content that you'll be able to dive in and enjoy and love. Please subscribe to the channel. It's new. Come on, y'all, support. But also take in that knowledge. We're putting, you know, the, the company is really, really, really about not only giving you a the first ever plus size consignment platform for sizes 12 to 32, but also giving you content, right? It's not just about fashion, but it's about how does fashion and other concepts fit into your life so you can live an overall better, happier life, right? So that that's why I'm really passionate about Style For It as well. And so self-care regimen, what does that mean? So for me, I tend to like get dry skin and, and all of that stuff. So I make sure that I slather my body in oil and things like that. Or I have literally a giant treasure chest of beauty products because I'm constantly getting products from a uh, birch box and I'm, I'm, and I'm styling, you know, figuring out different looks that I'm doing, or I have like different accessories, you know, y'all seen me with my hats. Hopefully you've seen me with my hats, spend some good time picking the, you see this wonderful, let me, let's take time to look at the hat. It's fabulous. Isn't it fabulous? It's fabulous. So, and this is fabulous too, right? So I'm all about the accessories, guys. Accessories are everything. Everything. <laughs> like, everything. <laughs> so, and they're accessories at stylefort.com. Don't worry. They got you. There's some really one-of-a-kind bags on there. Y'all, you better get, get them before they're gone because they're fabulous. Fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. And uh, so, really, self-care. 
that is whatever you define it for yourself. Some women I know big on the meditation. They wake up five minutes, only five minutes, ladies and gentlemen, five minutes. You get your peaceful mm, moment on and you do your thing, right? And it gives you what? That peace, that sanctitude, that kind of just development of like, oh, what am I going to do? Setting the intention. It's, in, it's just oh, amazing, right? Other people are what? Into the yoga, 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 stretching, downward dog, all that good stuff in jazz, as they like to say. Are you doing that? What is your self-care, right? Uh, also, I'm big on reading. How many times did I talk about reading? <laughs> So I literally, my entire office desk is like covered with quotes. I'm obsessed with words, 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 words. On my death stone, it might say Natasha Nurse, the wordsmith, <laughs> like literally. <laughs> um, too bad I'll probably be cremated, but you know, you get the point, ladies and gentlemen, you get the point. So, <laughs> you know, for me, reading quotes and reading uh, words of wisdom by famous people, non-famous people, people who have lived and are giving back to the world, right? Love, love reading quotes every day. It really helps move me, move my spirit, give me the motivation and the context that I need for thinking about my own intentions I've set for the day. So what are you doing for your self-care? What did you do for today's self-care regimen? If you didn't think about it, if you didn't implore it, I ask you, Take a moment now. You're watching this either on the live or the replay. What are you going to do for the rest of the day? And what are you doing for tomorrow, right? Set the intention and actually implement. It's important. Next, and this one might surprise you, but for all y'all who know me, I'm like Miss Networking. Networking for fun. So being an advocate for yourself is about really trying to take uh, kind of what you want out of life and keep pushing forward, right? So it's about growth. It's about nurturing. And it's also about learning and exploring. And what I love about networking, and I, I don't necessarily know if you agree with me, but again, put it in the comments. Let me know. Networking is a beautiful opportunity to learn more about yourself and others in the world and what you can turn these relationships that you're building these great conversations that you're having and hopefully uh, developing as you continue on on your networking journey to what to get a better job to get new opportunities to start a business to grow a business networking is the basis of so much success that we have in our careers and also our lives we meet new girlfriends we meet new boyfriends we meet husbands partners yeah, now, networking can be quite, quite successful if you're working it right. <laughs> so I definitely want you to think about networking and not in the girl, I need a new job kind of context, but I want it, I want you to think about networking for fun because that is going to help you present your story over and over again when you meet these new people. And again, it can also be networking within your own network, right? When your mom and sister are like, oh, did you hear about Janice and her da-da-da, right? Maybe people in your network, you need to already network within that community. But the point is, what are you doing when it comes to expanding and growing who you know in your community, in your tribe, so that you can level up on the personal side, the career, or both? Then the last step really for uh, kind of this conversation, we are coming close to time, so that makes sense, is learning every single day. So who here learned something new for today? I did. Did you? It's real easy, guys. It's called google.com. It's also called reading. It's also called networking. It's also called spending time and doing new things, trying new things, right? So learning is key. I mean, for me as a content creator, as uh, a person who's just on a journey of learning as much as I can, my life motto is what? To learn something new and meet someone new every single day. And I'm able to achieve this because I spend time consuming new content. I spend time networking online. I do a lot of social networking. That's where I really love to up, like level up there. LinkedIn, shout out to LinkedIn. It's a phenomenal platform that allows you to do it. Also, hey, where are we? Facebook, hello. There's a lot of networking we can do here, right? But it's a really, really pivotal opportunity for you to see how you can increase your life opportunities, goals, and community and people in your network 
through networking. So just, just think about it. But learning is key. It's really how you can perfect your craft or better get better at your craft. I don't really enjoy the word perfect because, you know, people have... People have hangups with perfection. <laughs> so it's another topic. If you want to dive deep there, let me know in the comments. But just, just remember that, okay? That learning doesn't end, right? I know sometimes people get frustrated with school and they're like, I'm never doing this again. I'm never doing homework. But remember to always that life is about learning. It's about learning more about yourself. It's about learning more, more about the needs that you have. And it's about standing up for yourself. And so I wanted to go through things, not necessarily on like, advocating for yourself from a, you know, what are words do I need to say? What phrases? If that's something that you're interested in, I'm happy to visit that and kind of give that guidance and insight. But this list really addresses some of the things that you need to do and work on so that you can be a better advocate for yourself so that you can what? create scenarios where if you do have to say a certain type of phrase like no this is disrespectful or no I don't want this right that you have the confidence that you have the the uh, kind of cojones to <laughs> to keep moving forward and say absolutely not I refuse to tolerate this right so that that's really what we we focused on today but again if there there's so much that can be talked on this subject and discussed so if there are things that you would love for me to follow up with please just put them in in the comments just put hashtag replay if you're watching this on the replay uh if you watch this live hello i adore you thank you for your time boom booms so uh just lastly as we kind of wind down this conversation just have a couple of more uh words to share go figure right i did say the wordsmith la 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 Oh, I tickle myself so much, guys. <laughs> Words of wisdom uh, when it comes to this concept of kind of being your number one advocate. Number one, you matter, right? Your thoughts matter. Your voice matters. The presentation you're creating in this world matters. Your taste in fashion, your taste in, in your passions, everything about your life matters. Do not ever think or question that for a moment, right? Because whenever you do, that's when you're not advocating for yourself. That's when you're creating the impression that you don't deserve to be loved, that you don't deserve to be tr uh, to res be respected, that people can and say and do things not within what you want. And that's not acceptable. You matter always, right? You matter, matter period. Like there's no exceptions, <laughs> it's just you matter. And so it's really up to you, though, to make sure that that's clear in the words that you're saying in the image and presentation that you're making for yourself and also kind of the decisions that you're making in this world. Right. So think about that. Think about how you're effectuating that that phrase. You matter. Right. And if you don't feel like you are, what could you do? What could you make? How could you change that? Right. And so, to, again, take time to reflect and really think about that. OK, next if you don't prioritize it yourself, what is the end result of that decision? It's going to be you resenting yourself and resenting your life. Is there a better way to live? I think so. Now, the question is then, do you think so? And then are you willing to do something about it? Right? Because sometimes we think things. Absolutely. Right? We're like, slavery is bad. Of course. Right? Yeah, sure. <laughs> but if you're not willing to do anything, if you're not willing to protest and, and, and kind of make your voice heard and, and bring injustice, uh, bring justice to the situations where justice is needed, do like you agreeing with it? Is it really doing anything? Is it effectuating anything? Right? No. So <laughs> the choices we make and the things that we say and the things that we do matter, but we also have to make sure that we're working towards the goals that we believe in, the things that we are principles, right? So if you are not prioritizing yourself, you will resent you and your life. So what are you going to do about it? Right? Deep questions here, deep comments. Next you know, this whole conversation about being your number at one advocate, it's deep, it's heavy, right? It's, it's a heavy subject, but it's a necessary conversation. And what, what is the number one step out of to do, to do anything when it comes to really advocating and loving yourself on a deeper level? You have to want to, you have to decide, right? So from making that decision of yes, right? That's where you come from the place of yes. Yes, I want to love myself better. Yes. I want to be treated with respect. Yes, I want my voice to be heard. Yes, I deserve to be loved. Yes, I deserve and, wor and I'm worthy of the job that I want. Yes, I deserve to create a signature style that helps me become more confident in my life and in my career. Yes, 
I want to make a decision that helps better me and my family and my loved ones, right? Yes. And you fill in the blank, right? Then you can what? You can create the action plan. You can work through it. You can build a tribe of support to help you effectuate it. You can network. You can grow your network and, and really go forward with the goal you want to achieve. But again, we first have to come from a place of yes. Do you want this? Right? Because if you want it, you can achieve it. But if you are not clear on what you want, right? If you don't know you well enough, you can't advocate for yourself. You can't make the decisions that are in line for what you want and what you need out of this world. So I just encourage you to, when you're thinking about this concept, where are you coming from? Are you coming from a place of yes? Because if so, you can rock this, boom, boom. You can get this done and we can go ahead, right? But if you're not, then what do you need to do to get to that first place of yes so that you can move forward? So lots of deep conversations. I hope I, uh, I'm, I'm triggering some kind of really deep thinking here because you deserve it. You deserve to love yourself to the max. Living your best life, baby, is more than a hashtag. It is a way of living, but it becomes a, a, a reality for you when you start to really dive deep and answer these deep questions, okay? So to wrap this up, what do I need you to do? I need you to like this video. I need you to share this video. I need you to put comments in this video and tell me, A, your thoughts on kind of what I discussed. A, do you agree, disagree with anything? Do you want to talk about things on a deeper level? Do you have recommendations for upcoming content that me and Style For It are putting together because that is what the company is dedicated for doing. First online consignment platform dedicated to sizes 12 to 32 for women, plus size women who are looking to up grade their style with wonderful discount new items as well as previously worn items. So if you are, you've never been, <laughs> listen, do yourself a favor, go to styleforit.com, get your life, have fun <laughs> and buy some wonderful pieces that you need. But then also, do you have too much clutter in your closet? If so, what do you want to do about it? You better sell. Sell and make some money. This is the time to make money. If that was a goal for you for 2019, start getting popping. All right, so go to styleforit.com, open up an account, start shopping, and also start selling. I do both. It's phenomenal. Enjoy. All right. And then again, I just want to thank you for coming in and joining this conversation. I'd love for you to really follow along the conversation on the social media. Uh, you can follow style, you can find style for it on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter, on YouTube. So just make sure that you go to styleforit.com. You'll see all their social media handles there. You're obviously here on Facebook. So you hopefully have liked the Facebook page. If not like, 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 make sure that you share this video. And then with that, I just hope you have, you know, the amazing rest of your day and stay tuned for our next conversation. Alrighty. So it's been a pleasure as always. Again, check out those accessories on Styleford. They have some really cute bags some really cute, cute accessories. I'm all about the accessories. Accessories are everything. They really can make or break an outfit. So check it out. You will thank me. It's been fun. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Be good. Bye.